Good morning. It's so good to see you. We thought it was so important on this day especially that we gather. And whether you are with us in person or you're joining us by virtual means, we are so thankful that you are a part of this service. Our region has been deeply impacted um, by what is being described as the most significant tornado event in Kentucky's history. And so all throughout western Kentucky, over into south central Kentucky, there are people who are reeling and who are hurting. During times like this, we remember the gift that God has given us in one another. We have each other. And that is a very purposeful gift given by God, and that is why our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And I have to tell you, even in the context of the devastation that our region has experienced and continues to sort through, it has been a beautiful thing to watch God's people love with the love of Jesus Christ. So today as we gather, as we continue to walk through this Advent season, we wanted to begin with prayer. I don't know about you, but I have come to believe that the most impactful thing I can do ever is to carry somebody to Jesus on my knees, to lift them up to the one who can do all things, the one who can heal all wounds, the one who gives life eternal to all who look to him. And so in that spirit, as we begin our service this day, let's join our hearts together in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you hurting. We're hurting because so many of us have experienced devastation, have experienced loss, have experienced pain. We have friends and neighbors who have lost loved ones, Lord, and... We just can't imagine the pain they must be feeling in this moment, the, the hurt that they must be enduring right now. And, Lord, we ask that you would intervene in their hearts and in their minds right now, Lord, that, that even in a context in which it makes absolutely no sense, that somehow, Lord, by, by your sovereign grace, that you would give them peace that passes understanding. Lord, guard their hearts. Guard their minds in Christ Jesus. We, we pray for all those who have lost friends, loved ones, those who had to spend time searching only to discover that their nightmare had come true. We, we ask that you would intervene in their lives in ways we don't even know to ask for. We pray, Lord, recognizing that there are groanings inside of our hearts that are too deep for words, and we pray that you would intervene and make yourself known, make your presence palpable, Lord. We pray for those who experience the loss of life. We pray for those who have experienced loss in different forms as well, for those who've lost pets. Lord, we ask that you would bless them. Let them feel your love and ours. For those that have lost property, those that are dealing with damage and destruction, Lord, we lift them to you and, and we pray that your people would come in the power of your spirit and, Lord, be there with them in this moment. Walk with them through this moment, indicating and revealing that you are there. We pray for all those whose world has been upended and, and, and turned on its head. Lord, we pray that, that in some way that you would give them peace. Lord, we pray for all of those who are seeking to put life back together in whatever context, in whatever way, Lord, that you would guide them and be ever-present with them. And help us, your people, to rally around one another, 
to be the hands and the feet of Jesus and to help each other, to love one another as you have loved us, and to do that which is pleasing in your sight and helpful to those around us. Lord, we're so thankful that even in the face of the destruction, we have seen, we have seen helpers emerge. And so, Lord, now we pray for the first responders. We pray for every police officer, every firefighter, every paramedic, every rescue team member. We pray for all of those who have rushed into the danger to provide rescue for others. Lord, they have placed their lives on the line so that others might be saved. And Lord, we pray that you would bless them and protect them as they continue in their task. We pray that as they process all that they have seen, Lord, that you would, that you would bring healing to their hearts. And Lord, we pray for those who are even helping the first responders, those who will help them process what they've seen and what they've heard and what they've experienced. Lord, give them wisdom and let them help in the power of your Holy Spirit to bring healing. Lord, we're so thankful for our medical, medical personnel and particularly, Lord, those who were in the emergency rooms on Friday night and Saturday morning and, and ongoing in days to follow. Lord, we thank you for their expertise and all the years that they put into training and, and honing the skills that you gave them and bringing their gifts and talents and abilities to the fore. And, Lord, their willingness to use them selflessly to help those who are in crisis. We are so thankful for doctors and nurses and CNAs and all of the people who make emergency rooms and hospitals and doctor op doctor's offices work. We thank you for the administrators who, who keep it all running, and we pray that you would bless them now and in days to come. Lord, for those who have come in to clear ways, to clear roads, we ask that you would bless and protect them. And for those who will help us to rebuild, we pray that you would strengthen their hands and protect them in the effort that will stretch out, as we know, for quite some time. We're so thankful, Lord, for our infrastructure rebuilders who went out while the storm was still raging, seeking to restore lines, seeking to restore power, seeking to restore water, and all of the other things that, that make our world work. Lord, please protect them as they continue in their task. And we pray for those who have yet to have power or water or other things turned on. But we pray specifically for those who are out in the element, seeking to rebuild, please protect them and please bless their families, all the families of all of these folks who are, who are leaving their own families to rush into harm's way to help our communities. And well, we're so thankful for the volunteers. Every single human being who lays aside their own self-interest to help others, to help their neighbors to help those around them. We thank you for those who are serving with the Red Cross, and we thank you for all of those who uh, are a part of the Red Cross and making, making shelter possible. We thank you for all the Family Resource and Youth Service Center workers, all the social workers, all the folks who are, who are seeking to reach into families and seeking to provide real and tangible help right now. We thank you for all of those who are donating money and supplies and time and energy to, to serving people who were harder hit than they were. And we thank you, Lord, for the selflessness that is emerging in our community. And we pray against selfishness, and Lord, that anybody who would seek to do evil in this time would be stayed by your hand. But we're so thankful, Lord, for the volunteers who continue to step up to give we're thankful for the schools, all the school systems, and all the individual administrators and teachers who are, who are seeking to intervene, to house, to feed, to bless. And we thank you for those who are coming from far away to use the gifts and the talents and the abilities that you have given them to pour into this region. Lord, we pray as we begin this service during the Advent season, on the Advent Sunday of joy, truly that the joy of the Lord would be our strength. We pray 
that you would heal us, Lord. And we pray that you would help us help each other heal. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it is the Advent Sunday of joy, and today we will see that the joy of the Lord remains, and indeed the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we would invite you to worship with your whole heart, to cry out to God, and as we do, we know he will speak to our hearts. Pastor Ricky. Let's sing together, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. We want to say welcome, and thank you for being a part of this service, and we want to connect with you. We do that by way of a service called Flock Note, and right there from your smartphone, you can text first BG to 84576, first BG to 84576. If you do that, here in about four minutes, we will email you uh, a service order virtually that you can use to follow along and to know all the things that are going on uh, here at First Baptist. And there's a lot going on, even as we continue through the Advent season. Um, do want to let you know uh, that we are continuing to read God's Word. We're reading through the Gospels, and I would encourage you to find time. Now, your routine's probably off a little bit. I know mine is, but still find time to get God's Word inside of you because you will find, I'm finding, that God's Word is healing. And through God's Word, He speaks to us. We meet the author, and He transforms us. I also want to make you aware um, of ways you can help right now. And one of the things that we want to do is to keep researching uh, ways that our church can help collectively. But remember, when you, as one who trusts and follows Jesus, as a member or a part of First Baptist Church Bowling Green, when you go help, that means the church is helping. You represent God's people here at the corner of 12th and Chestnut. And so there are some things that we can all uh, think about, we can all definitely do, even right now, to help. Uh, number one, we can pray. And that's why we opened our service with prayer, and we will continue to pray. But I would encourage you, just continue to pray. That is indeed the most powerful thing we can do. 
You might have felt some sense of helplessness over the last couple of days. I know I have. Uh, we can't meet every single need. It's just too big. It's too much. But, but God, God welcomes us to call out to him, to reach out to him, to come to him, and to find hope and healing and help. So pray. Secondly, we want to encourage you to love your neighbors, to reach out, to seek to be a blessing to people. Um, look around you. And again, as we, as followers of Jesus Christ, help people, um, that is the church moving in ways that, I mean, we have people out helping others right this minute. And so we're thankful for that. Um, we want to encourage you to consider donating or volunteering with the Red Cross at this time, right now. Uh, they have set up a shelter at South Warren Middle School, and uh, I've, I've been out there, and there's, it, it is uh, moving in several different ways to see not only the volume of people who are there in need of help, um, but the volume of people who are there helping and the volume of people who are there donating, and the volume of people who are seeking to serve. And so that's going on right now at South Warren, but we also know that the Red Cross is establishing other outposts, other shelters around the region. Uh, we're actually in conversation with them as well um, about possibilities here at the corner of 12th and Chestnut, but the Red Cross is kind of taking the lead on this, and you can serve through the Red Cross to tangibly help people right now. And uh, the Family Resource and Youth Service Center leaders at South, Middle, South Warren Middle School and High School on their Facebook page are keeping updated lists of what they need. And so you can consult with that. In fact, we've linked to it in the flock note. You can also donate to Refuge BG. Uh, one of the community's hardest hit was our refugee and immigrant community. And Refuge BG has set up a way that you can donate directly to those efforts through Refuge BG, which is a partner uh, ministry with First Baptist Church and is a partner ministry with Kentucky Baptist Convention. Those are Baptist missionaries working right here in our region. And in fact, Pat Howard, whom many of you know, is on the board of Refuge BG. I've linked to that uh, in your flock note as well. You can donate to Kentucky Baptist Disaster Relief. One of the things you're getting ready to start seeing in our region is a bunch of yellow shirts and yellow hats. That is Kentucky Baptist Disaster Relief. Those are trained Baptists. Many of you are trained Baptists with Disaster Relief who are ready in a moment's notice to go in and help. And they're already here. They're already assessing damage and seeking how they can help. So these are trained people who are going to help not only with the cleanup effort, but also um, with the rebuilding effort. And so if you see a yellow shirt and a yellow hat, uh, and you see Baptist Disaster Relief, I want you to know part of your giving to First Baptist Church supports that. But one of the ways you can help our region is to give to Kentucky Baptist Disaster Relief. Another way, and this was suggested by Todd Gray, who's our Kentucky Baptist Convention Executive Director, is uh, based on the recommendation from Disaster Relief, is you can start purchasing gift cards. Uh, you know, over the days and weeks and months to come, there's going to be a lot of work need to be done. So they're recommending buying gift cards from home improvement stores or from um, grocery stores or from even fast food restaurants that we can give out to people who are serving. Uh, it's not giving out money, but it's giving out uh, funding toward the work that needs to be done. And so those are all things you can do right now. And I promise you that we will keep up with the most impactful ways that we as a church can be helpful, uh, and we will communicate those to you. But we wanted to give you some options today. Um, and we also want to remind you that we continue uh, in our emphasis on the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. We uh, give to Lottie Moon because that money goes straight to missionaries serving all around the world. And so our goal is $35,000. We are just shy of $10,000, and we've got We've got some time um, to continue giving toward that effort. But the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is such a blessing to missionaries who are living out their calling all around the globe. Tonight, we are going forward with the Sanctuary Choir and Orchestra Christmas program. That'll be right here at 6 p.m. Uh, to the degree that we are able, we are going to live stream that. Our internet has gone down for this moment, but we will record it and put it out as soon as our internet has come back up. And so you can join us live right here at 6 p.m., or you can watch it from your device uh, at a time, uh, either hopefully during the concert or later. Next week, Lord willing, we will continue with Christmas in the parking lot. We want to seek to, to be a blessing to our community through that effort and uh, help people be reminded that God is near. 
And so that will be next Sunday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then our Christmas Eve services will have a service at 5 p.m. right here and a broadcast at 6 p.m. on WBKO Fox. Uh, in both of those services, you will have the opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us on Christmas Eve. And so we would encourage you to be a part of those things. And as we continue through the Advent, today is the Advent Sunday of joy, believe it or not. And our God is present and our God is strengthening us with his joy. And I would invite you to join me in turning our attention to the Advent wreath now as Maestro Jeff Reed and Dr. Sherry Reed come, and they light the Advent candle of joy. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, he has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Good morning. Today we celebrate the Advent season by lighting the candle of joy. We, re we recognize that joy is deeper than mere happiness, for joy is found not in our circumstances, but in our relationship with Almighty God. We are thankful that the joy of the Lord truly is our strength. Please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the joy we have in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that you are the author of our joy, for in your great love for us, you sent your only begotten Son to save us. We thank you for Jesus' birth, for his life, for his death for us on the cross, for his resurrection from the dead, and for his coming return. We thank you that you make it possible for our joy to be complete. In Jesus' name, amen. In the midst of the struggles of a stable, our Lord was born and joy broke forth. We sing together this morning, What Child Is This? Stand with me, if you would.
Heavenly Father, we come this morning to do just that, to bow our hearts and our knees before you to worship our great living God. We thank you for the gift of the manger, the gift of the Christ child, and all that that means for us in showing us how to live and going to the cross to pay for the price for our sins and being raised from the dead that we might know victory over sin and the grave. We pray in the midst of turmoil that we might find the joy that comes in knowing you. Thank you for this time that we have to worship you together this morning. In Jesus' precious and holy name, together we all pray. Amen. <laughs> 